Joe, Eileen, you missed it. I, I read the whole whole spiel about the New River Health District and the great things you guys are doing. So appreciate that work. Sharon saw the spiel and said, you better get that before the program because we're not going to have time during it. So we wanted to get everybody at nine. Sorry, there's so much happening so quickly. Yes, yes, thanks. It's a tough time. But, uh, well, yeah. it, it looks like we're right at that time, Henry. If you would like to go ahead and introduce Brett, turn it over to him, I think, I think we're good to go. My pleasure. Thanks, Leo. Well, it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Brett Malone, uh, PhD president and CEO of the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. Brett has led multiple startups as co-founder and CEO in the biotech sector. He has a strong background working with uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and data platforms in diagnostics and pharma markets. His background includes a PhD in computational methods right across the street at Virginia Tech. And he is experienced in building companies to support cancer, liver disease, antibiotics, software, and AI diagnostics. His startup experience includes funding, partner development, early product strategy, and go-to-market commercialization. With that, I turn it over to you, Brett. Thanks, Henry. I will uh, share my screen. I've got a few slides. And uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with everyone today. It's, uh, Sorry. Uh-oh. How about that? So, um, I didn't introduce the guest speaker. Siri is glad to be here as well. So uh, we have that out of the way. Uh, thank, thanks, Henry. And uh, hey, it's, it's really great to see a mixture of familiar faces, uh, as well as just an exciting round of new companies and new faces. So uh, I, was, I want to talk a little bit from both a perspective of where we are currently with the CRC and uh, frankly, where we've been. So I've been in this position now, uh, taking over for some very big shoes to fill uh, with Joe Meredith, uh, who, as we talked earlier in 1995, he was one of my very first mentors in the region as I left grad school and started on my career as an entrepreneur. Um, so we'll dive into that a little bit too. So Henry did a good job uh, in terms of my background. I'm an aerospace engineer trained formally, PhD out of Virginia Tech. Uh, a year before I finished my PhD, I started a company because a dissertation wasn't enough work and um, decided to locate here in the CRC with my partner and start uh, the company that still exists here, Phoenix Integration. Uh, that was 25 years ago. And it's really, for me, this position coming back, coming into Joe's role and thinking about how to give back to the community. It really is a tremendous homecoming as well as uh, an opportunity to take everything that I've learned on the road. So as Henry mentioned, I've actually had the pleasure of uh, being in multiple ecosystems, innovation, startup technology ecosystems. They all have some common themes, you know, um, technology, uh, a prominent university environment, as well as a really passionate entrepreneurial community to start businesses. And as well, you know, a motivated and very supportive community. So, you know, those regions that I'm describing include Boulder, Colorado, Denver, um, Boston, San Francisco, and, and even Cleveland, Ohio, believe it or not. And so, you know, what, what the common theme for my background has always been has been working with companies at that intersection, a, a university investigator, an entrepreneur who discovers something exciting um, in a computer algorithm or in a, in a Petri dish at the bench and really has a desire and a passion to move that forward and create a business. And, and we, have a, you know, we have a lot of that in our community and that's really what makes the CRC work. It's, it's a lot of, um, I have, you know, when I come into the park in the morning, I just have a lot of pride and, and I'm humbled and somewhat overwhelmed with, you know, what, what has been built here over the last 30 years. And, you know, frankly, I get excited about what the opportunity is. It's, it's nice to see uh, in phase two out by 460, there's, there's, you know, green fields and, you know, I'm starting to develop that vision of what, what's going to go there. And, and, and it'll probably be shaped very very much by what we've experienced here with COVID. And so you'll hear a little bit about that. One of the, for, for those of you who are not familiar with the CRC, we, we are the university's research park. We're owned by the foundation. So we're a for-profit entity, uh, but we are part of the Virginia Tech Foundation. 
Uh, so we're not a formal part of the university, but being part of the foundation, uh, we, we, man we contribute to the endowment, for example, in terms of any, any kind of dividends that come off of the operations. One of the, the really exciting uh, numbers that stands out for me is over the years, we've seen over 750 companies come in and through the park. You know, currently, as Henry said, we've got over 227 companies. Uh, but, you know, the, the thinking about the impact we've had over the years, both in the community as well as uh, some very high, uh, high profile, notable companies that have become very, very successful and gone out to you know, IPOs and raised a lot of money and had significant impact in the industry. And at the same time, we've had companies that have been here for uh, almost since the beginning. You know, if you think about what Tracy Wilkins did starting Tech Lab, um, you know, that's a company that's having significant impact in the testing fields for infectious diseases. And of course, Henry's company, ACI, has been here and having an impact and, and really driving, driving growth and helping all of our companies, you know, put a you know, put a good look onto our company and really expand and build the data services that we need. So by the numbers, you know, we're about 36 buildings out here um, and we're, we're 227 officially by the number. But one of the exciting things is some of you may not know about some of our uh, additional satellite operations. So in Newport News, we have an operation called Tech Center. This is a, par a partnership with a development company that has developed mixed use. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is it's a model for some things that we can do in Blacksburg, but it's also a model of how the CRC is expanding into other areas, mostly to bring resources back to the, the home base, so to speak. So, you know, what, what's exciting about Tech Center is it demonstrates what a mixed use community looks like. So we have research building one up and running uh, as well as mixed use in terms of apartments and um, you know, restaurants and things like that. But you know, for me as a technology geek, uh, this location is key because if you look in the lower right-hand corner, this is Jefferson National Labs. It's a Department of Energy federally funded lab that does a lot of really cool research in nuclear medicine, quantum computing, um, you know, particle physics. And we are developing programs to help them commercialize and actually help bring some of those resources back to startup companies. Uh, we also, as you'll hear a, bit, a little bit later, our relationship with NASA Langley, uh, NASA selected us to help run their entrepreneurial academy. And um, what, we're, what we're doing is tying in resources we have in Blacksburg, as well as resources at Tech Center to start to build that pipeline of people and talent so as we look to grow uh, the New River Valley region, as we look to grow the Blacksburg operation, one of the things that's important is to connect to other regions to support and bring talent here, but also complement the talent that we have so that our companies can continue to grow. Um, you know, the CRC, for anyone who's worked in the CRC or has a business here, uh, what you'll know is this region, you know, this operation has been successful because of a couple of ingredients. Um, clearly, the, the commitment and the relationship with Virginia Tech gives us the opportunity. But, you know, even more importantly, the entrepreneurial spirit of the researchers anywhere in Blacksburg, there's a lot of people who have done their PhD, you know, and they want to stay in the region. So they decide they want to start a company, they want to join a company and help us grow. So that spirit, of, you know, not just research, but applied research, um, translational research, being able to take their work and put it into uh, a, a marketplace, you know, and, and create a commercial opportunity. That entrepreneurial spirit is rich here. And again, you know, as I said, it reminds me of, of being in Boulder, where you've got a community of people that really embrace those risk takers. And... Um, you know, when I mention Boulder and I think about it, you know, I've, I've been here for 30 plus years uh, and this regional work-life balance is, is uh, second to none. You know, when you think about the quality of life, when you think about the mountains, the river, um, and as well being able to cultivate your intellectual curiosity, you know, that's what people are looking for. And, and I think even more so now in COVID, 
where people are looking to get out of the cities they're looking for quality of life. You know, they're looking for a little bit of elbow room. And at the same time, you know, yeah, you can go to another region, but if you don't have that base of intellectual stimulus, if you don't have that base of intellectual curiosity, if you don't have a community of people that have that spirit, um, yes, you can move out to the country, but you know, you're not going to be fed from that perspective. And so that's, that's really why this region works. And frankly, that's why we, the CRC works. You know, most of you hear the big numbers, but you might not, you might be surprised at some of the things that we're doing in the, in the industries that we support and cultivate. Um, you know, I came out of a, a software background, originally software engineering, uh, but then quickly made a career shift about 15 years ago and then spent the second half of my career in biotech, therapeutics and diagnostics. So, you know, it's exciting to see the potential we have here. It's also exciting to see, you know, the kind of companies like Torque that are growing from research and, you know, making it out, making an impact with, uh, you know, driverless vehicles and, and all the technology that comes off of the work that Torque is doing. You know, if you think about that as a cluster, there, there, there are pockets of technology that come off of that work and, and being supported by the Transportation Institute. So the BTTI being a, um, a lab, if you will, to really provide uh, feedback and test some of the most critical sensors. If, if anyone has a camera in their car, it most likely was tested uh, on the test track over at VTTI. And, uh, you know, those new technologies like uh, active cruise control that follows cars and, you know, your car will automatically slow down. Uh, those are all technologies that, that were tested uh, right across the street at the, at the lab. One of the cool things that we did is, is help build the test track. So we, we helped build a two and a half mile loop that actually simulates a rural road. So, you know, all of this technology is great if you're going straight and, straight and level right down 460. But if you, if you get on a backcountry road where there's no land, lines painted and there's a lot of blind curves, uh, it's, it starts to really test that technology. So we, we built a test track to help really challenge those cameras. And so it, it's really cool to see that kind of work. Um, you know, if I take a little deep dive here in the biotech segment, for example, you know, we've got some really exciting companies and, and most of you really, when you think about, oh, it's biotech, it's life science, we just put them all into one bucket. You know, we, we are actively having conversations with big pharma companies to, to want to locate here. And, you know, they're very interested in the segmentation of the companies we have. So we've been working to look at um, how do we break this down? So we have this composite of companies who are developing therapeutics like Landos and Synthonics, but we also have diagnostic companies like Tech Lab. And then we have, you know, early preclinical stage companies that, uh, you know, like Teculon that are working on antibiotics. And so, you know, when we start to show the composition of companies that we have, and, and right now there's probably over 30 companies just in this category, uh, it, it's really interesting. And we include, for example, IV Watch there at Tech Center, um, but, you know, we, we have collaborations and, you know, what they're doing is they have a biosensor technology that evaluates whether or not your IV is leaking, which, if you're, if you're a cancer patient having chemotherapy, uh, unfortunately that can be very damaging to the skin. And so there's companies that are doing all kinds of interesting work like that. Uh, a lot of you are very familiar with some of the bigger names on the software side of things. Uh, but you know, if you look at the total composition, there's over 50 companies in software, cybersecurity, federal services. So you know, some of the bigger ones that you might know obviously with 1901 group, who recently got acquired by Lidos, um, but as well, you know, we've got companies that are doing um, really interesting work in uh, blockchain, interesting work in federal planning. And so a lot of the, the companies derive from being able to, to serve other industries. Uh, and then some of the automation, robotics companies, drone research, um, and what's really fun in this position is to help cultivate some of these 40 plus companies. Some of them are very small. You may know of uh, Cowden Technologies, they're doing drone work. And you know one of our really great up and coming companies, uh, Mickey Cowden, 
is is what I I like to call him our Renaissance man. He he has a vineyard. He ha, he grows grapes. He makes wine, and at the same time, he's an engineer, and he figured out how to how to build a drone that would fly around and water all of his grapevines. And so when you think about the application of technology to something that is purely and truly art, it's really cool to have those kind of people in our in our community and, and you know, being able not just to do the technology and the work, but contribute in terms of cultivating, mentoring and, and including others. Some other things that you may not be familiar with, you know, we've got uh, a lot of testing in what I would call functional facilities. And this is really where, you know, when I talk about developing and growing the CRC and I talk about the impact of COVID, what I'm learning is, you know, we are looking to develop more functional space. We, we have a term, we call it space with purpose. And it's really designed to say, if we're gonna build facilities, we, we really wanna have a specialized facility like a lab, uh, like a testing facility, like an impact center. And so a lot of our forward thinking development strategy is based on that, you know, serving biotech with, to have more labs. You know, one of the numbers that struck me is um, we have, we are at a hundred percent capacity in our wet lab space. Our wet lab space has been fully occupied at hundred percent for straight for over five years. And we have a waiting list of eight to 10 companies. So in my mind, you know, that's clearly a demonstration of demand. And one of the things that we're doing, I'll talk a little bit later, is, is working with the state and local regions to fund a study to really evaluate what kind of space is needed in the biotech. So I've talked about the culture and the community, uh, really talking now about expanding the experience um, and then thinking about the space, the space with purpose. But um, you know, when I think about expanding the experience, one of the things too in the park that, that some of you who work here know, um, we're really looking to expand our amenities. So when I think about developing more food options, more coffee options, you know, more uh, expanding the gym options, you know, that will have to come with time because we're, we're developing in a pandemic. And yet at the same time, it actually gives us an opportunity to step back and think a little more at a different pace to be able to figure out what, what should we be building? And, um, you know, it's clear from day one that we need more amenities to really just expand the experience. So we're excited about some plans that we have. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking about this in phases where we can expand and create some new, new work um, and, and add quickly as well as think about designing out in phase two, what could be done with the, with the whole sort of, uh, oasis, if you will. You know, we, we talk a lot about the culture and, and I, I have a lot here, but this, this community that supports the CRC is second to none. And, you know, when I think about uh, the, kind of, the kind of culture it takes to really get up day after day and grind through your goals, you know, and grind through the, the hard work of, that it takes to start a company. And, and frankly, some of the lonely work uh, you know, it really helps to have this culture, this local culture of people who support and receive those entrepreneurs back into the community. You know, in Boulder, there's a, there's a really strong community of people who make, it, make people feel okay to fail. And, you know, we don't talk about that as much, but, you know, it, it, if you don't have enough support, you might not be as willing to take these risks. So we have a great mentorship program. And, you know, I, I'm just so thankful for our entire community of people who step in uh, and, and help our companies, whether they're here in the park or not. And what we're seeing now is this passing of the torch, if you will. You know, we've got a lot of people that are retiring. We've got a lot of people that have been here 20, 25 years. And then we've got this whole new community of people coming in, starting businesses. They've been here 25 days. And so connecting and providing leadership programs is, is critical to helping them feel successful. And, and the most important thing you can do as a mentor is encourage, but also let them know that, hey, failure may happen. And if it does, you will be received back into the community and we'll, we'll support you on your next venture. You know, you won't be, you won't be an outcast. And that, that's really important. And, and a lot of people don't think about it that way, but you know, if you're in a community building something and there's a lot of 
there's a lot of risk and there, there's a lot of fear of failure. So we, we have to really bring that level down and help people realize that there have been people here who have done it before and they'll support them. I talked a little bit about the amenities. I talked a little bit about the experience. So the, the CRC experience in my mind, really we need to cultivate that. And that's one of my missions. That's one of my charters as I think about expanding the options here at the park. Um, a lot of you know John Olver and, and Jeannie Stosser, they're building the view apartments. They're gonna be right adjacent to uh, the airport, right across the street from the airport, right adjacent to uh, Rainbow Riders. And so, you know, they're gonna be adding now more housing that's, that's almost literally uh, adjacent to the CRC. And, you know, that, that's gonna come with an expanded experience as well. Uh, we, we see that there's gonna be a need for more, more food options. But also, you know, thinking differently about the park, you know, as we've, as some of you who have remember the park or have been in the park for years, you know, it's very much kind of a nine to five place. And, you know, at the same time, when I came in really early in the morning or if I'm here late at night, you know, there's, there's a lot of buildings with lights that are still on. There's a lot of people grinding it out at, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. So, you know, we, we've got to understand, we, we shouldn't have those people feel like, hey, you know, they're the last ones in the park, turn out the lights. You know, so we really are thinking about the experience in terms of a 24-7 place. And, you know, I, uh, I had the, the fortunate opportunity to work within the, Go, the Google ecosystem and uh, Google Life Sciences company Freenome that, that was at the Verily Life Science campus in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, you talk about a thriving hub, energy, you talk about a lot of excitement and, you know, it, it was really a 24-7 place. And so, you know, we're, we're looking to not force people to become workaholics, but at the same time, there are people that, that really just thrive on that always on, on instant, you know, instant on. And, you know, we also are excited to in, integrate more students through internship programs here at the CRC. We're also looking to uh, engage more with university departments. And so, you know, for example, we are building the, the Department of Engineering swing building. If uh, any of you out here know, the, um, the, the work that's being done out at the end of the runway in phase two, uh, where the loop comes around in front of the bus stop, that's gonna be what's called 1600. That's gonna be the engineering swing building. We're building that for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is uh, renovating Randolph Hall. And, um, you know, they're doing a lot of work on the campus within the engineering departments. They've got to move those departments out and so they can do all the work in the buildings. So we're going to, we're going to have the aerospace and the mechanical engineering department here at the CRC for several years. So, you know, that's going to give us a really cool way to, you know, infuse more students into the experience. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times people have commented from campus, you know, a student or a faculty member from campus, it's like, hey, I didn't even know the CRC was over there, or I don't know what you guys do. So, you know, like, it's really important for me to be an ambassador, to go out and, and meet these people, to help build the bridges. And uh, one of the exciting things, too, our, our new VP of Research and Innovation at Virginia Tech has invited me to be part of the Research Innovation Council. So being able to have a, a front row seat on the work that's being developed and the, the commercial opportunities is really important. And, and I think that's going to help us grow all of our companies. So one of the areas, um, oh, by the way, this is Mickey. This is our Renaissance man who builds drones and makes wine. So uh, he's, he's just a fantastic guy. And, um, you know, what, what's cool is uh, about, well, let's see, about 18 months ago, we launched Cogro. Uh, Cogro was really underway before I got here, but you know the, it was launched in October of 2019, and um, it's a co-working space. So one of the things too, in terms of changing the experience or adding to the experience, we've really thought about creating more flexibility. When we have young investigators, you know they don't want to sign a lease for a, a an office that has their own square footage, and now it's all you know they've got to manage everything. So we're trying to make it easier and easier to get into the park if you're an individual. And so co-working space, everyone has seen the model. Uh, we work, for example, uh, we, we have here at, in, at the CRC, an organization called Cogro. 
and it's in the Knowledge Works building, and it's basically shared space. You know, we we have a monthly membership, and you can pay in different levels depending on how much service you get. Whether you have, you know, a desk, whether you have the right just to come in and hang out, uh, maybe you pay a little extra, then you can have a small office within the facility. But we have a kitchen facility, a beautiful, um, you know, meeting rooms, and you know that gives people an easier way to get into the park. And what we're finding is, you know, a lot of these companies that get started, they're in Cogro, and then they come back to us and they say, hey, we're, we're growing, we need more of our own dedicated space. So, you know, we, we find it as a, a really interesting and exciting way to get people in. We're, we're over 30 members now in the park, or in Cogro. And, um, you know, the numbers have steadily gone up, even in the middle of the pandemic. In fact, in the pandemic, we saw more people uh, looking to utilize this kind of model because, you know, it being a hybrid, uh, this gives them an option to come in, have a little distancing, and at the same time, not be working from home the whole time. So what's exciting for me is I think about, um, you know, programs and supporting. So a lot of people think of the CRC as purely just a leasing arrangement. Um, I really look at a, a whole host of services that we provide. And I, I really look at the CRC as a model to provide services, to provide connections, to provide networking, and, and really helping our, our companies grow through whatever is necessary. So we've launched what we call a concierge service. It's basically a liaison. And, and I've been very proactive with outreach to industries who might want to get involved in the CRC support our companies, partner with them. And yet at the same time, uh, you know, they, these are big companies like BAE and Raytheon. And so ultimately we may have them as tenants in the park, but right now we're creating virtual relationships where they come in, they connect with our companies. And a lot of our smaller companies don't necessarily have that business development um, function in their company. You know, they're all technologists. They're not thinking about reaching out and developing those corporate relationships but they're welcome when they come. The other thing that we're doing is if you think about the Cogra model for shared lab space, we are very excited uh, to be thinking about using the same model around wet lab space. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, you know, the, and then one of the final pieces is, as we talked about, we're being funded to actually help engage, for example, with the NASA tech transfer model. So the shared lab space is exciting. As I mentioned, we, are, we have a proposal in the works with the state for funding to do an evaluation regionally of what are the demands for lab space and what should we build. You know, so we know with the numbers, uh, having a backlog and having our labs 100% occupied almost constantly, we know there's opportunity. What we don't want to do is develop the wrong thing. So. We, we actually are looking to, to fund a study that will evaluate that demand, that market. And actually it'll be a nice way to paint a picture of regionally, what is our biotech ecosystem look like? And frankly, what, what do we need to do as leaders in the community to support the growth of more of those biotech companies? And you know, it starts with understanding the pipeline of the forecast. What are the likely kind of companies that are gonna come out? You know, for example, do we need to build labs that support companies like Tech Lab that are doing diagnostics and in infectious diseases? Or are we doing, do we need to build more physical testing facilities for something like a, a D3O that's going to be testing materials or nano nanomaterials? And so there's a lot that goes into thinking about this and, and we want to do it right. We want to do it right because frankly, we don't want to miss the opportunity. There's no, there's no question there is the opportunity. What we don't want to do is is build the wrong thing and or frankly build something that's going to fill up so fast that we're going to have the same problem five years from now so so i'm going to end with a couple commercials or announcements maybe these are our um, programs <laughs> and um, you know we're doing two things some of you may have been involved previously in the what we call the global challenge it was an opportunity with virginia tech's office of outreach international affairs to bring international student teams here to Blacksburg and have them showcase some of the work that they've done. Uh, obviously the pandemic has forced us to change our thinking on that. In the past, 
the the global challenge was the the problems that the student teams worked on were sourced at their home universities. So these are teams who came from Singapore, Paris, uh, you know, Italy, and you know they brought their own problem with them. So what what we're doing now is we're turning the tide. We're inviting companies in the region to submit cases for the student teams to work on. And um, you know, if you don't have this invitation, we want to get it out to everyone. There's this is not an exclusive CRC thing. This is anyone in the region can participate. And we really are looking to source cases for our student teams to be able to, to work on. And these are these are teams from around the world. And ultimately what we're looking to do is to bring them in in a virtual uh, event at the end of August where they can showcase uh, all the problem, you know, all the different cases that they worked on. So we're excited about sort of flipping the script on this. Um, in addition, this global case challenge will be part of what we call Game Changer Week. And, um, you know, it, I, I'm looking at this as a model. You know, we modeled this after Boulder Startup Week or, you know, if you look at Denver Startup Week, you know, this isn't exclusive to startups. We're creating an event that is owned by the community. And it's essentially a celebration of people who are building businesses, changing the game. And so we're, we're inviting any and all companies uh, and organizations, frankly, to participate, to create, multi, to create a track, to create program, to create uh, information. We're partnering with RBTC. Uh, we're trying to include it, all of the, uh, the stakeholders in our region that would be you know, helping us cultivate this. Uh, this, this will be in conjunction ultimately with where Tech Night will end up. And so what we see is an organically derived event that, um, that showcases companies, it showcases some of our best talent, and it gives some of our organizations an opportunity to talk about the region, talk about, you know, the technologies the companies are developing, uh, you know, talk about raising money. So we, we are looking to create the framework around that and we're inviting leadership, you know, to come in and take ownership of tracks uh, to put their own event program together under the umbrella of this. So we'll be glad to, you know, I'll be glad to email, um, connect anyone who's interested with, with Melissa who's organizing this. So I, that concludes my story. Um, I'm sure there are questions perhaps and um of course uh, what i would like to say is uh for those that would like to just ask questions to brett aloud please feel free more than uh to do so however if you're more comfortable with placing a question in the chat um i can also provide those intermittently as well but i um, mean i'll open up this time for q a thank you for your time i appreciate it so Brett, good morning. This is Dave Prevet. Good to see you again. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Hi, Dave. I recognize that view. That's great. So I'll, I'll make a shameless plug for Cogro. It's a great space. I encourage everyone to come check it out when you have a chance. Um, Brett, I know you and I have talked about your great aspirations there with Dawn and the whole team. I was just thinking, um, like the Google campus experience that you mentioned, are there other um, research parks around the country that you're learning from or that might hold some of the same aspirational strategies that will really help shape the next phase? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we're members of the AURP Association of Research Park. I mean, you know, the research park model is pretty well defined. I'm actually, frankly, more interested in learning from completely different models where, you know, for example, the Google Life Sciences campus, you know, these, one of the things we learn, for example, is the integrated amenities you know, buildings that, that have the barista <laughs> downstairs, you know, the coffee, the fitness, the food, you know, and then you've got offices, you've got labs, but, but you have a lot of open space. So we talk a lot about intellectual curiosity. The, there's the three C's, you know, cur curiosity, uh, collision, and courage. So when you think about creating opportunity for, you know, collision, that, you know, we did more business at Freenome in front of the, the coffee station area in the little mini kitchenette in, in our floor 
than we did standing around cubes. And so that tells you something, right? And, and we're actually, we're working to recreate that. If, if you, any of you are in the park know, if you've driven past the old Moss building, it was one of our very, very first buildings. Um, we're completely renovating that. And one of the things we're doing is building that community kitchen. And, you know, it's, to answer your question, what I'm learning are what some of the big tech companies are doing. You know, how do they, how do they create, because at the end of the day, we are a community and we, we need to have that kind of collision. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about, you know, the, the co-working space, this idea of having shared labs, co-working labs, um, it's not a new idea. If, if it's done correctly, it will work. And there are plenty of companies that are, that are demonstrating that, you know, launch labs, Alexandria ARE has a, what they call a launch lab. And they, they have also a grad lab. So they think about the expense of a biotech facility and they think about a startup is small and young and they can't weather that expense. So how do you, how do you solve that problem? Well, you, you have just sort of this graduated program where they get in and then as they grow, they can take over their own space. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of doing it right in, in help understanding what the demand is and offering the product that, that fits that demand. Awesome. Brad, I think one of the neat things about being in the Corporate Research Center is the opportunities to, to have these these casual interactions with uh, with other companies and, and and that sort of thing. I, I tell me a little bit about how much of your time you spend just just helping us make these connections in the park that are so important to uh, to start up as well as ongoing business growth. Yeah, you know, I mentioned this concierge program, and it's a fancy name for basically what you just said, Henry. You know, we have companies come in from the outside who want to understand what's going on in the park. So, you know, a, a great example is just yesterday, I had a call with a public, publicly traded large software company. And, you know, we spent the bulk of the time saying, well, here, here's a company that's doing this. I think you'd be interested in partnering with them. And they had no idea, but now, you know, this morning we've got emails flying back and forth between some of our small companies and this big company. And who knows where that will go, but that, you know, in, that's not a new thing. I mean, that's what Joe did really well for all of us for many years. Absolutely. Um, what, what I'm also finding interesting and rewarding is a lot of companies in the park don't even know what some of the other companies in the park are doing. And so this concierge service, we almost turn inward and we say, hey, you know, uh, it, here's a company over here who's doing some environmental work. They need somebody to do a website. You know, here's, here's ACI. And so like those are little things that come through me. And, you know, I'm always studying the list of companies that we have. And, you know, I have this term, it might sound a little corny, but to me, I take it very, very seriously. But um, I am the brand ambassador for all of 227 companies. And, you know, anything I can do at any point in time to make a connection, add some value, uh, help get one of our companies on the national stage. Uh, it, it's just what I do the most passionately. And, you know, so when I think about what my role is, it, it's really leadership around that ambassadorship. And, and so when I think about ex what I call expanding the enterprise, you know, it's no great secret. Virginia Tech is in a big way going to Northern Virginia. And so with a with billion dollars of investment at the innovation campus, there's a big push to think about what is our Northern Virginia footprint. You know, when I think about, when I think about that, when I think about the CRC having a footprint in Northern Virginia, for example, my goal is to create a complementary service. So companies in Blacksburg are always looking for talent, people connection, and you know, they can grow companies. Maybe they can hire a bunch of great grad student programmers but they can't find someone, for example, who understands regulatory. But if they're in Northern Virginia and we have an office, if we give one of our Blacksburg companies an office in Northern Virginia, you know, now they have access to talent that just doesn't exist in our region. And it means that they can grow in Blacksburg even faster. And so, you know, it's not a replacement of talent and it's not a moving of the company. It's really 
a connectivity of the enterprise across the whole state so that we can get all the resources we need for our companies. Brett, do you have any idea what future employment might be in the CRC? Well, you know, it's a, it's a good question. And, um, you know, Frank, I, we're sitting somewhere around 3,500 people. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is the model at the CRC has always been more organic growth. You know, we, we would love to recruit a big company and have them come in and immediately plop two or 300 people in. But, you know, we know that those are more unicorns than they are. So we cultivate the organic growth. So it grows pretty steadily. I don't have numbers that I would forecast, but I would tell you that we have, we have several companies that are at the edge of really explosive growth. So if I think about Torque, for example, you know, you know Torque has, is looking to add you know, several hundred people into their enterprise. You know, that's not a big secret. And, you know, Michael Fleming is, is really going like gangbusters to, to find those people and put them into the program. Uh, we have some other biotech companies that are right about ready to break out and they have similar forecasts. So I would say you, you'll see a handful of companies that pop with, with several hundred additions. Uh, and then you're going to see the steady organic growth. One of the things that I'm most encouraged by is we're not seeing the erosion, you know, so we're not seeing, um, you know, a mass exodus. Now, the software companies as a result of the pandemic are all working from home, but they're staying active on, on their leases, for example. So we're, we're at about 92 and a half percent occupancy. You know, my goal for the, the staff is to push this up to about 94, 95% um, and, you know, backfill some space. And at the same time, you know, help cultivate the companies that are going to grow organically. Thanks. Other um, questions for Brett? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Brett, I wanted to kind of ask how the pandemic has impacted the park. I noticed that on the co-growth chart um it looks like it spiked there around january and february of last year and then it kind of went down but now it's slowly mm -hmm. coming back up so i was just curious how you guys have managed the pandemic how it impacted you and how you're coming out of it now yeah well um first and foremost you know we we take sanitation very very seriously here so we've spent a lot more money on janitorial to make sure the buildings are safe and are clean um we're you know honoring people who want to be at work, but we're encouraging, you know, all of the social distancing requirements. Uh, you know, we've worked really closely with, with the county and every, all of our companies, if early on and throughout the summer, for example, all of our companies were very diligent and um, about reporting any positive cases they had. So we would do notifications, for example, if there were a positive <laughs> case in the building, you know, we would, we would do a notification to that building. And in some cases we do a park wide notification. So we're, we're alerting people to, you know, any kind of the positive tests that we've had. We've been fortunate that we've, you know, any cases that we've had have not sort of exponentially grown. So most of them have been isolated and handled pretty well. And that's really where the, the county has come in in terms of their health programs. You know, now what we're doing is turning our attentions, as everyone is, to the vaccine. So we're stepping up and providing leadership around potentially the CRC being a vaccine site. Um, I don't have details on that and, and I don't wanna get anyone's hopes up, but we have offered and volunteered the CRC to be a site for vaccines. Um, we are working with the county, we're working with Virginia Tech Emergency Response to make that happen because you know, as a service to our companies, if we can, if we can make that happen, we want to do it. And so we're, we're coordinating with the local officials to make, make sure that it's done right. And it would be within probably the 1C category. 1B is, you know, as you know, we're handling that. Um, the other thing that I think, I, I was talking about this early on, I don't know if everyone was on yet. Uh, the, the business continuity team uh, in the region has done a fantastic job. Ashley Briggs and, and the team there. The business continuity team program is really designed to help companies get on the list for having their entire company vaccinated. And, um, you know, you can fill out a form. I think we have that information on our website. Um, 
but you know, it's, it's another thing that we're putting information out to all of our park companies to make sure they're aware of what the, the community is doing for that. Uh, with that, I would like to say that we have, do have time for one more question. Uh, so if anybody would like to, to be that last, that last question for Brett, uh, don't be shy. All right. Well, thank you all very much for, uh, for being here. Thank you, Brett, for, uh, for your time. Certainly, um, I'm going to talk a little bit in, in a second about uh, our company's experience at the CRC, which has been nothing short of remarkable. Um, but I absolutely agree that we have a top-notch work-life balance in Montgomery County and the CRC. Um, our company, ACI, started at the CRC in 1996, so about the same time Brett launched. We have found it to be an ideal business location, both for the location and the support of on entrepreneurial businesses. So please let me say on behalf of the Chamber Board and today's attendees, thank you, Brett, and your entire CRC team. I know that you've got a, another uh, event you've got to get on here shortly. Well, no, thank you. And, and uh, it, it's an honor to, to be talking to everyone today. And, you know, I welcome any and all input, questions. Uh, uh, my, I'll put my email in the chat box if you don't have it or just go to the CRC website. You can find my email. And, uh, you know, any questions after, you know, comments, we're, we're glad to work on those. We're, we're glad to be part of the community and, and helping everyone drive their business. So, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk today. Thanks, Brett. We look forward for big things. Yep. All right. Well, with that, uh, I just wanted to show a couple of uh, notes about uh, my company's experience, Automation Creations, at, uh, at the Corporate Research Center and, and where we've gone. Um, let's see. There we go. Let's see. What's the presenter view? There's Brett. Yep. And me. Yep. And so Automation Creations, we are custom software developers. Um, that is, uh, people ask what we do. I, it's not just websites. We'll occasionally do websites, but we're more excited about programming. We have 24 people on our staff. We do uh, mobile app development. We do some database design, um, server tuning, uh, support, help desk, training. And, and so maybe the more general thing when I tell people about what we are, we are ghostwriters for your software. You have a software idea, we can help you get it, get it out there and it's your intellectual property. It belongs to you after we write it. Tell you a little bit about our beginning on the next slide. Um, we started the company in 1996 uh, with MatWeb. It's an online materials database for engineers to, to find out material properties that they're looking for and it's free. Uh, an interesting side note, we got involved in the Chamber of Commerce early on uh, when it was the Christiansburg Chamber of Commerce. And uh, um, we created a little page for, for various businesses to say, hey, if you come by, uh, we'll take your picture and let you put updates about what's going on in your personal status. Back in 1999, we called it nrvfaces.com. And uh, that was five years before Zuckerberg took his, his company public. Uh, did, didn't quite make that jump, but, uh, but, but I was looking through some of our old materials and saw, the, uh, saw that business card we had created for folks to, to create NRV faces. That's no longer there. If you're, if you're wanting to join, you're a little late for our social media party. But, uh, <laughs> but I started the company with, uh, with, with software development for uh, government spreadsheets and budget tracking, um, getting budget and spreadsheet data onto the web so that different uh, government programs could, could standardize their briefing charts. Uh, on the next slide, we did a little bit of work for Frank Beamer back in 2001. He needed beamerball.com to be a, uh, a website where he and his coaching staff could easily post updates about the Hokies and the football team. So before there was a lot of uh, content management systems, we created a system for his coaches. Um, next slide, we talk about uh, textile factory. You might not know it, but textiles are still alive in Christiansburg. There is a highly automated factory that does all of their business practically lights out with a, just a handful of employees operating two football fields of machinery, but it's all web-based and it's all running on software that we developed in the early 2000s. Next slide. Uh, today, we, we do a lot of work for uh, different um, uh, government type 
contracting work, but we do commercial work as well. But uh, uh, I've got a lot of my employees working with 1901 Group and some of the work they're doing with the uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, moving uh, ap existing applications to the web for, uh, for cloud-based solutions. And there are other companies like mine in the park, but I'm, I'm one of the only ones that does both commercial and government work. So an example of commercial is on the next slide. We talk about um, how, to, how to list your property on the web. Um, Rains manages over a thousand rental properties and we've built a back-end solution for them to, uh, to not only list their properties, but manage all the maintenance, key control, schedule appointments, make sure that their people have a, um, an up-to-date way to automate the scheduling process. They say that saves them about four hours a day in, uh, in their process. Uh, on the next slide, we're also the, the engine behind the Blacksburg Transit mobile app. We started working with them to improve their server and API work. And uh, the, the mobile app now, if you haven't used it in a while, not only shows you where every bus is in the system, the bus you're waiting on, and the next bus behind it, how many people are on that bus? Do you want to catch the next bus? You can find out using the Blacksburg Transit mobile app. And finally, uh, we do some server and hosting work um, for, for folks who need server maintenance. That's our team at what we called a uh, chamber ribbon tying, where, um, where we were joining another company, Interactive Design and Development uh, was a company that also grew up in the park. And uh, when the time was right, we merged our two companies and, and did a ribbon tying event with the chamber. So that was a cool idea Sharon had. Um, so, th so thanks for that. But uh, uh, we're happy to talk about any information technology needs you might need, particularly when it comes to software and software development. So I appreciate everyone's time today. Um, you know, the, the eggs and issues happens on the first Thursday of every month. And uh, it's always a great topic with superb networking opportunities. Look, uh, those of us that are attending today, and I see a lot of uh, business leaders, chamber board members, past board members, government leaders, educational experts, economic developers, nonprofits, and some future business leaders with new growing companies. So I, I strongly believe that the uh, Eggs and Issues program is a fantastic opportunity to network. And I want you to tell your peers and post on your social media as well as the chamber's social media about today's program, as well as our upcoming programs. I uh, mentioned it at the start that we have a program in March. It's on the first Thursday of every month. So the Eggs and Issues March program will focus on the housing challenge we face in our community. We have invited eight community leaders to speak on this challenge, the lack of housing options, and what this means in the various sectors, such as rental, uh, affordable housing, single family homes, student housing, mortgages, and more. And we want you to think about how this impacts our economic development of our community. We have the 2021 Women's Leadership Conference coming up. Uh, that information is on the website and newsletter. It's uh, also up in the chat. If you scroll up, uh, Leo has posted several uh, short links to, to our upcoming events. But also let me say thank you so much for attending this morning. We always try to end by nine o'clock. We know people have, uh, have busy days, but by starting at 7.30 in the morning, uh, we doubt that you have something more pressing. I mean, you don't need sleep, you're a business leader. So, uh, so thanks for coming here today. Uh, appreciate you, uh, your attendance and your participation. Great questions for Brett, great support for, uh, for what's going on in our region. With that, we'll, uh, we'll close. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Thank you guys.